In covering the recent firing of trauma therapist Bessel van der Kolk, the Boston Globe quoted him as saying that the Justice Resource Institute was trying to steal $2.5 million in donations raised by himself and the trauma center. So does that make Dr. van der Kolk a victim? It certainly would seem to suggest it. Nowhere in the article does he address how he may have treated women at the trauma center. It's all about someone or somebody stealing money to which Dr. van der Kolk seemed to feel entitled. What's remarkable about this is that it's not the first time van der Kolk has seen his celebrity come crashing down, and not the first time he has responded by appropriating what would appear to be a victim status. Which seems paradoxical given that he's built his career on propagating therapy techniques that infantilize women. On May 22, 2014, the New York Times ran an article that referred to van der Kolk as a lead defender in repressed memory in court cases. The article states, For a time, judges and juries were persuaded by the testimony of van der Kolk. But as the article goes on to state, In time, it became clear innocent people had been wrongfully persecuted. Families, careers, and in some cases, entire lives were destroyed. So in essence, was not van der Kolk helping to create the very trauma he claimed to be treating? And did that advocate of trauma victims address any of the suffering that may have occurred as a consequence of the therapy? Did he regret anything? It would appear not. According to the article, his lab at Massachusetts General Hospital was shuttered and he lost his affiliation with Harvard Medical School. The official reason was a lack of funding. But van der Kolk and his allies believed that the true motives were political. One might assume, then, that van der Kolk believes himself a victim of politics. This celebrity trauma advocate had not a single word for the victims of one of the most horrific practices in mental health history, a practice that he repeatedly defended in courts until the courts wised up to him. What the article failed to mention is shortly before van der Kolk lost his affiliation with Harvard, he was deposed in a court case where he claimed, as he had in several cases, to be an expert witness of repressed memory therapy. In that deposition, van der Kolk was cross-examined by Christopher Barden, who holds both a law degree from Harvard and a PhD in psychology from Stanford University. Barden stated, His apt at Harvard ended shortly after my deposition of him. The fact that his major research assistant, Dania Varde, pled guilty to fabricating research and that van der Kolk testified in a deceptive manner are matters of public record. Little wonder he disappeared from Harvard. But one last word on the therapy that van der Kolk became famous for defending and promoting. As mentioned, van der Kolk has been a key player in the area of repressed memory therapy and its closely related diagnosis, dissociative identity disorder. During the course of recovered memory therapy, patients, predominantly women, are often induced through hypnosis, drugs, and suggestion to act like children. It was believed these women harbored multiple child personalities brought on through horrific childhood traumas that only the therapist could fix. Now, we know that recovered memory therapy reduces women to children, results in codependent relationships with their therapist, and has led to therapists abusing their position of power. One horrific example is that of Pat Burgess, who sued her therapist and won a settlement of $10.6 million. Her therapist was a founder of the ISSTD, the International Society for the Study of Trauma and Dissociation, an organization with which van der Kolk has collaborated for many years. This organization has promoted techniques such as hypnosis as a means to treat dissociative identity disorder and has notoriously propagated conspiracy theories of satanic ritual abuse and mind control since the early 80s. Van der Kolk's recovered memory research has been used to bring validity to claims now thoroughly discredited of satanic ritual abuse. As Dr. Richard McNally, professor of psychology at Harvard University says, the notion of hypnotizing people, the notion of calling them by different names to label different aspects of personality, that has been so debunked it's radioactive. Is it any wonder that a man who has advocated in courts for the repeated infantilization of women through recovered memory therapy, a horrific therapy that has destroyed lives, has been accused of bullying and denigrating women? People who are not of the highest ethical standards, who cannot professionally conduct themselves around their fellow employees, 
much less in the universe of trauma therapy, perhaps should not be treating or training others to treat people. Thankfully, things are changing. Women are questioning recovered memory therapy and dubious therapists such as Bessel van der Kolk. We, Gray Faction, are leading the charge in opposing characters like Bessel van der Kolk, who infantilize women with dangerous therapies. Our mission is to bring an end to pseudoscientific mental health care practices of the variety van der Kolk so vociferously defended in court. To learn more about Gray Faction, visit grayfaction.org.